Welcome everyone, and thanks for joining me today. I'm Stephanie Gregg with the Illinois State Museum, and I'm so excited to spend some time with one of our scientists. Have you ever wondered what it's like to be a scientist at a museum? Let's find out with our zoologist, Dr. Meredith Mahoney. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, Meredith. So what kind of science do you do here at the museum? So I do a bunch of different types of things. I study animals in general, so I learn about animals and how they live their lives, what they do, where they live. My focus animals are amphibians, especially salamanders, and reptiles, and I've also done some research on dragonflies. So how did you become a scientist? That's a good question. I, I always like nature and being outdoors. And when I was growing up, a lot of times we watched nature television shows with our family. Every Sunday night, we watched the Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. That was a family thing. So we always, and my family always encouraged that. And so as I grew up and was in school, I was always just trying to learn more about animals. I really liked learning more about them. And it just, it just kept doing that. <laughs> Neat. So what do you do in your job? What kind of tools help you do? your work. There's a lot of different parts of my job. I work in the museum collections with specimens and I uh, keep track of them. I keep them organized. I work with researchers who visit the collections and help them find what they need to do their research projects. I also do things like behind the scenes tours. I help with exhibits and write exhibits about animals usually the types of tools we use. There's a lot of different tools. But the big one is computers. We use lots of computers just to keep track of the specimens and where they are, what we, what we know about them, all the information that goes with them. When we're studying specimens, we might be using uh, microscopes or magnifying glasses, that sorts of thing. Um, but it sort of depends on the, the, the question, what we wind up doing. Um, but it's, so, you know, we sort of try to find the right tool for the, the job that we're doing. So I heard you say the word specimen. That might be a new word for some of us. Oh, that's a good point. What's a specimen? Specimens are, in zoology, they are any different individual animal object. So a skeleton of an animal would be called a specimen, or if we have a specimen that's the skin of a squirrel, something like that, we would call that a specimen. And then every specimen gets a number and we keep track of every individual specimen. So the specimens are the research objects that we study in our museum collection. It looks like we've got quite a few specimens in our collection. Yes, we really do. So what do you like best about your job? I like that every day is different. So we don't know necessarily who might come through the door or different projects are going on. So you get to do different things every day and sort of work on, sometimes it, not everything is equally fun, but you can spread out the things that are kind of serious work you need to do versus some of the funner things too. So there's a lot of control and, and um, uh, choice in, in what you're spending your time on at different times of the day. So what's the grossest thing you've ever done? There are some gross things. I say a lot of times the gross things tend to be things that smell bad um, because you're dealing with the animals and they, they're dead animals. So lots of times they have smells. Um, we keep specimens before we, when we make a skeleton or something, we keep them in a freezer. And one time our freezer broke down and we had to move all of the animals from one freezer to another one really fast. And it was gross. So <laughs> that it sounds was, smelly. <laughs> it was smelly and messy and not fun. Oh. <laughs> so do you have a favorite specimen in the collection? You know, there's a lot of cool specimens and some days I feel like it changes every day, but one of my favorite specimens is this white-tailed jackrabbit. This is a taxidermy specimen. We used to have it in an exhibit in the museum about this species. This is a species that used to have a very small population in Illinois, but they don't live in Illinois right now. Uh, I think it's cool. I like that this, this animal, they change from a dark brown coat in the summer into white in the winter time. So when we look at this animal, we can see that it was winter time when we brought it into the museum collection. I love that it's just kind of big, uh, a big animal and they're really cool. I love their big ears. So these, these are favorite because he's sort of a very dynamic and, and tells a story, you know, he's a winter time animal. Why does he change colors? So in the winter time, when there's snow on the ground, the white coat helps them 
be camouflaged. So they're hidden, they blend into the background. And then in the summertime, they molt back into brown and the brown coat again, helps them be hidden and camouflaged in the darker brown soil and plants and things like that in the summertime. So we've got a lot of specimens around us. Why are some in jars with liquid and why are some attached to different pieces of wood? So we use the specimens for different purposes in the museum. Some of them, like the ones we have up here, are mostly used for exhibits, or we might use them for like an educational program or a tour to tell people about animals and it allows people to get, and kids, to get up close to a, an animal and see it when they probably wouldn't be able to get up close in the wild to the real live animal running around. Other specimens, like the ones in the jars, we also have ones in cabinets in here too, are used in research. And so we keep those in, preserved so that they can be used over many years by different researchers to come study them. So they're not really used to be in an exhibit because they're not posed in a nice lifelike pose. They're preserved to keep them stable um, and available for lots of research in the future. So we can't pet or touch these like we would an animal at home, right? That is definitely true. They are very delicate. So we, we handle them with care um, and try to sometimes, depending on the animal, we might use gloves um, because of the oils in our skin. Also just they're fragile, they're, they're dry. So if you don't wanna be rough with them, uh, the fur can get broken or even like parts of their, their, their legs or their toes and ears can get bent and things like that. So you do have to handle them with care um, and not run around um, willy nilly with them because the, yeah. So again, so that they stay in good shape for people to enjoy for a long time. Cool. Sounds important. So we could keep these in our collection for Many, 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 many years, oh, right? Yeah, for sure. Thanks so much, Meredith. This was all pretty cool to learn. Could you see yourself as a zoologist? Maybe one day I'll get to interview you here. Thanks so much and happy learning.